let's throw it back a bit. On August 7th of 2017, I released my first true collaboration with fellow horror creator Rainbot, titled The Dark Side of Reddit. This was, as the title suggests, a dive into the deeper, darker side of the website, although in hindsight, especially compared to some things we've since covered, it does seem relatively tame. The video primarily digs into Reddit stories, specifically covering one about a guy who thinks his mother poisoned him, another about a guy who found a weird camera under his sink, and third, a weird subreddit that gives links to unsecured home security cameras. While these are all pretty strange and unnerving, there was one mystery in that video, this enigmatic fourth one that successfully left me completely dumbfounded at a cause and possible explanation. This has bothered me so much that it's stuck with me ever since I initially discovered it, way, way back during the infancy of this channel. The Yay Video Games Incident if you don't recall, I touched on the actual Reddit thread that this user cryptically posted in and walked you through the scenario that played out. Other than that though, I didn't give you any sort of resolution. And that would be… well, because I didn't have one. I simply couldn't figure it out, no matter how deep I dig into his case. And that just didn't sit well with me. That is… until now. You see… There's a user on Reddit by the name of SoLegitHS that discovered this mystery through my subreddit and decided to do some investigating of their own. Since then, they've stumbled upon a gold mine of a rabbit hole that just might finally put this longtime internet mystery to rest. Now, if you have absolutely no idea what the hell is going on here and what the deal is with this random Reddit user that I'm rambling on about, then don't worry. I'll get you caught up with the initial incident so you aren't left behind in confusion. So, buckle down, because tonight, we finally get to the bottom of this, as we solve the mystery of Yay Video Games. So, the story and initial exposure of Yay Video Games originates way back in 2010. Essentially, this is the Reddit handle of a user that appeared to go absolutely insane, seemingly out of nowhere during a conversation about Elder Scrolls Oblivion with another user. On September 8th, 2010, there was a post in the gaming subreddit by a user named I Wish I Was a Meme that simply asked about users' favorite mods for Elder Scrolls Oblivion. In response, Yay Video Games jumped in with this snarky remark. The uninstall button. The game is great and all that, but god it's hard to fully remove the junk it leaves behind on your system. You really need to check out that mod when the time comes to get rid of it. Otherwise, I think Oscuro's Oblivion Overhaul is a nice start. Another user with a deleted account then jumped in afterwards with a simple, What? To which Yay Video Games responds once more, saying this. The uninstall button. The game is great. Ubisoft goes Steamworks bye bye, always on DRM. But you off to go work, always on work DR. Check out the junk it leaves behind on you. The deleted user responded once more in confusion. This makes even less sense. Oblivion has an uninstall button and it works. I've used it more times than I care to mention. All mods install themselves in Oblivion's directory. The uninstall doesn't touch them as it's unaware. All you do is delete the Oblivion directory. And then it gets… weird. Yay Video Games, at this point, proceeded to post over 4,000 comments in the span of just a few hours. Each and every one of them seemed to be a spin on his odd initial phrase, Ubisoft goes Steamworks bye bye, always on DRM. The thing is, each comment was formatted differently, some with bold, some with italics, some with special formatting, and even some with embedded links to very, very cryptic images that seemed to make no sense at all. One of the most notable images is one that shows his quotes in very eerie handwriting, thus leaving people to think that this guy is suffering from some sort of manic episode. In essence, he shut down this entire thread with non-stop spam. His account was quickly banned during this, and since then, the thread was deleted. Attempting to visit his Reddit profile simply results in a 404, since he also proceeded to delete his entire account sometime afterwards. This didn't stop speculation though. With mouths agape, people were scrambling to figure out what the hell it was that they'd just witnessed, 
and much of it led to dead ends. Analyze the creepy images? Nope, most of them are totally random. Other websites with the same username? Interesting, but nothing of value. Cryptic message in the quote? Uh, nope. It just seems like a spin on an actual DRM situation that occurred a few years ago with Steamworks. Unfortunately, as you might have guessed, he and his mystery have simply faded into obscure internet history. People haven't forgotten about it, but they haven't exactly solved it either. It's one of those things that seemed like it'd never be figured out. That is, like I said, until now. The user so legit HS dug through the internet archive of Yay Video Games posts and found a very interesting connection to another subreddit that holds the key to unlocking the safe that our answers are being held in. The one in question is simply titled R forward slash cleanliness. So, let's head over there. At first glance, this subreddit seems to be pretty barren. There's no sub description, there's no custom banner, the webpage title is a cryptic, this is what, and there's only one mod, being a user by the name of, no substance here. Scrolling through allows us to stumble upon some pretty random posts about bad sanitation that people have encountered in their daily lives, whether they be accompanied by photos or a simple text story. Really, not much more than that. The thing is though, Yay Video Games is here, and right under our nose. Back in 2012, he made a post in this sub titled, Magic. In it, he says, I need some help. I would not use it evilly. Now, this is pretty much just as cryptic as the Ubisoft Ghost Steamworks ordeal that took place two years prior to this. If he were just some random troll, or was doing this for attention, then why would he continue to post cryptic things onto a subreddit with virtually no subscribers at all? How did he even find this sub to begin with? Let's look at some other posts. Ah, here's one from two years earlier, by the soul mod that we mentioned earlier. Zelda. Let's see what this guy has to say about Zelda, and how, if at all, it has any relation to the topic of cleanliness. Hmm. Strange repetitive wordage, embedded links. All right, we've seen this before. So here, we have a very cryptic, quote, conversation between two users. Our moderator, no substance here, and this other person named not sure how big you are. Also, randomly thrown into the mix is yet another comment by a user named Final Record. Let's take a look into these accounts to see what we can dig up. So interestingly, no substance here is a few seemingly normal threads that they've started over in the gaming subreddit. In one of them, he asks about cheat codes, in another, he asks about a game you'd buy twice, and in this third one, he inquires about everyone's favorite game soundtrack. Each of these got quite a few responses, and nothing really seems all that out of the ordinary here. The one connection that I can make between each of these posts that could be seen as repetitive would be this phrase here, being, the interrogation room underwent some changes while you were away. Now, I wonder what this means. Prowling through the rest of his overview draws us back to the cleanliness subreddit that we saw earlier, and most of the other comments are from that thread with a strange conversation between he and not sure how big you are. Interestingly though, if you look over at the subreddits that he moderates, we can see that there are two of them, cleanliness and banana freaks. Let's take a look. Alright, so this one is kind of funny, I'll admit. Here we have two image threads both of which are from no substance here themselves. In one of them, we can see a hot dog whispering into a weird looking man's ear with the caption Dirty Freak, and in the other, we can see a photo of Cheeto Puffs, labeled as Banana Freaks. Now, the connection that I wanted to make here doesn't lie in the posts themselves, but rather, the comments. Not sure how big you are, commented on both of these threads, on a subreddit that's practically unknown to the rest of the world. 
Either these two people are one and the same, or the two are extremely close and are for some reason planning all this out. With that being said, let's dig into the other account to see what we can find. So this account has a ton, and I mean a ton of post history to dig through. This guy seemed to be extremely active on this account, so for brevity's sake, we're going to have to draw some generalizations here moving forward. From the top here, not sure how big you are as a moderator of two subreddits, being Humorless Classical and Hipster Jokes. Humorless Classical simply contains one post by the account, and it's simply of the subreddit name with one comment on it saying, LOL, right? Other than that, the rest of the subreddit seems to be spam about free movies and all that jazz, really nothing all that interesting. Jumping over to hipster jokes is where things become interesting. Here we can see that this subreddit has only 9 subscribers at the time of writing, and all of them seem to be… this guy. None of these posts make any sort of sense, which is something that we've come to accept by this point in time down this rabbit hole and these posts just seem to go on and on with repetitive randomness. Fishing through the comments on a few of these posts though, leads us to an interesting find. Like we've established, this repetitive behavior is commonplace for Reddit users that we're finding to be directly related to yay video games, so ignore that for a second, and take a look at the content of the comments themselves. I had it before on vinyl, you should hear it on cassette, make me a mixtape, I have this word, you probably haven't heard it, it's pretty underground, on vinyl, I'm on vinyl, I liked it before it was mainstream, before it was popular, before it was mainstream. What is the deal with this guy and his obsession with vinyl, hipster jokes, and repetition? I know that this sub is titled Hipster Jokes, and that's the point, but this guy is the only one here. Or is he? Remember that one account that we briefly mentioned earlier? vinyl record. I nearly glossed over his name in the comment thread while I was reading it, because it's exhibiting the exact same behavior as not sure how big you are. Before we take a look into that account, I want to briefly head back to the overview section of this guy's profile page and make a quick generalization. This account is pretty heavily active on threads relating to big pharma and various drugs. Glossing over his history allows us to see that this guy has either quite a bit of experience with these or quite a few issues that he's dealing with in relation to various medication. Just some food for thought. Moving on. So, this guy. Scrolling through his post history, once we get past all the I'm on vinyl, I'm on vinyl, I'm on vinyl, and ha 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 hipster, those jokes get me every time, post repetitions, we can actually see that he has quite a few normal comments on some threads, very reminiscent of yay video games, and not sure how big you are. Now, while this is the case, there is a point in time about 8 years ago that lines up with the yay video game situation where he seems to swap from somewhat normal-ish comments to total nonsense with repetitive replies to not sure how big you are's threads about hipsters. With that being said, there's one specific comment thread that I want to point out before we jump into a quick recap. Being this one right here. In a post titled, Hipster Fashion Cycle, by a user named Mayanessa, we can see that Vinyl Record responds to a comment saying one of his typical lines, being, I have this chart on vinyl. Clearly being a hipster joke, many other people responded with shit posts before a very, very familiar face pops in. Hmm, now what do we have here? Alright, so let's recap. We have Yay Video Game Snap in that original thread 8 years ago on the gaming subreddit. He spams in repetitions with spins on the phrase, Ubisoft Go Steamworks Bye Bye, always on DRM. His post history leads us to the Cleanliness subreddit, run by a user named No Substance Here, who also moderates a subreddit called Banana Freaks. The Banana Freaks subreddit has responses from a user by the name of Not Sure How Big You Are, and this guy makes quite a few hipster jokes on his hipster joke subreddit, all with responses from a user by the name of Vinyl Record. This Vinyl Record user seems to frequent the gaming subreddit as well, with seemingly normal comments back around the time the Yay Video Games incident happened, 
And conveniently, in one of these threads that he commented on with a vinyl joke, Yay Video Games busts in and hijacks the thread, bringing this thing full circle. I think it's safe to say at this point that each and every one of these profiles are absolutely and undoubtedly the same person. I mean, look at their names for example. All random words tied together, all capitalized very precisely, with the exception of Yay Video Games, and all exhibiting the same behavior on each other's thread. With this established and out of the way, what happened? Why is this person the way he is? So, a few moments ago I told you that we were going to make a quick generalization based off of Not Sure How Big You Are's post history regarding Big Pharma and their frequent comments on various pharmaceutical related threads and subreddits. On this account, he undoubtedly had the longest and most comprehensive post history, so it's safe to say that this was likely Yay Video Games' main account. With that being said, this all seems like the most damning evidence that we have to go off of to learn more about this guy. So let's go back and take a look at his stuff in further detail. Like I said prior, initially scrubbing through his post history seems incredibly overwhelming. This guy was extremely active throughout the past 8 years, and it's hard to pinpoint specific comments or threats to focus on. Before we proceed, I want to make a quick point. I noticed a trend when going through his posts and comments. The repetitions that this guy exhibits honestly seem to be isolated incidents, and interestingly, from about 6 years ago to the present, nothing too out of the ordinary seems to happen. 6 years ago we have an incident with repetitions, 7 years ago we have quite a few episodes, and 8 years ago we can find many, many more. It almost seems like whatever caused this guy to act this way was triggered by something. But what? There are a few threads and comments by him that can give us some answers, and a start, so we can establish some sort of foundation with this. I want to focus on this one here. Melbourne, Victoria, Australia. Spare bed here. If you don't mind an over-medicated chronic pain sufferer being generally irritable of course. I'm an ex-Jehovah's Witness myself, which if you aren't familiar with them, sort of makes someone automatically accustomed to people being rendered homeless due to an oppressive religious environment. Almost went through it myself back when. So straight off the bat here, he seems to be from Melbourne, he suffers from chronic pain, is overly medicated, and is an ex-Jehovah's Witness. So what kind of pain is he dealing with exactly? From the Chronic Fatigue Syndrome subreddit, there's a post by a user named GC30, which cryptically asks, How do I get out of this hole? In response, not sure how big you are, says this. Well, this is how I endured the pain of recovering six lost years of life due to sickness. I endured a terror that ravaged me with each step outside I took, that almost and occasionally did make me break down crying in panic just because I was exercising. A pain that awaited me for hours during the day while I waited, waited, waited in bed with nothing to do except sit in pain, just so I could exhaust myself by walking a few blocks or lift weights for a few minutes, and then go back to bed and wait for my reason for being to come again the next day. The total lack of any enjoyable activity whatsoever, total inability to even feel pleasure, panic that drove me to waking so often that I was sleeping in 2 hour blocks at a time, restless legs that has driven me crazy 24 7 for about a decade now due to human waste who called himself a doctor and gave a young teenager a dose of antipsychotics because hey, why bother trying anything else first when the person in front of you is a delusional idiot, right? A back that never, ever, ever stopped aching, tearing me up on the level of a middle grade flu maybe, but stiffened every single muscle, and, well, you get the picture. So he suffered from chronic pain that left him bedridden in his home. He was unable to feel pleasure, he had restless leg syndrome, was highly delusional, and seemed to be on antipsychotics by his doctor. In one last post that I want to touch on before we begin to theorize, he talks about a supposedly warped worldview that he had while he was a Jehovah's Witness. In a post by Reddit user Garbanzo607, not sure how big you are responds to the question, What warped worldview did you have while you were in JW? By saying this, I believe that actual demons were roaming the earth, manifesting themselves horror movie style. 
I know that's a core teaching, more or less, but for a few years I thought I actually encountered a demon once, and that they were watching me in my dreams. See, I used to get pretty sick semi-regularly, with migraines and fevers bad enough to make me delirious and give me hallucinations. When I was around 4 or 5, I was in bed at night with one of these fevers, and I saw one of the walls in my bedroom start shimmering and warping itself. Then, a silhouetted black figure stepped out of the wall and started pacing back and forth in front of it. Naturally, I was scared shitless. I couldn't even move. I just laid there, watching it walk in front of my wall for I don't know how long before it stopped pacing and stood, looking directly at me until I couldn't make it out anymore from all the patterns and movement in the wall behind it. I actually managed to get back to sleep after that, probably thanks to the fever. So when I woke up, I went straight to my mom to tell her what I saw, and she told me it was all real, and that all the terrible pictures I was drawing, monsters torturing people and whatnot, had broken Jehovah's protection and invited the demon into my room. Now, with all this in mind, we're able to make some connections about this guy and what he's been going through for most of his life. I really think that this guy has been suffering with some sort of delirium that could somehow be related to his chronic fatigue syndrome. In his posts, we're able to draw the conclusions that he's been dealing with this for most of his life. It's impacted his home life, his social life, and even his perception of reality entirely. He explains that when he was 4 or 5, he would hallucinate and would legitimately believe that demons were after him in real life. In the posts that we just read, he explains that the walls would warp in on themselves and it would quote, scare him shitless. The thing is though, is that his mother went along with it. She seemed to, at least with the posts that were given, use this fear to further her personal beliefs as a Jehovah's Witness. Now, I'm no expert in that religion or anything, and I'm not entirely sure what their teachings are, but telling a kid that the demons that they think they're experiencing are real can definitely scar someone for life. Anyway, somewhere down the line, this condition had progressed, completely left untreated under his parents' care, since, like we just established, she did very little to get him actual help. Fast forward a few years, and the doctor prescribes him what he calls antipsychotics in hopes of helping out, but as we know from his other post, these didn't help much at all. Fast forward a bit in his life and he ends up trying opiates to combat it. In another post that he made, titled, Plus One for Drugs, he explains that he was taking up to 1200 milligrams of codeine per day, all of which simply helped him cope with his condition. Now, we're beginning to dip into the post-incident portion of his life, and interestingly, this thread that he created gives us some sort of closure. In it, he explains that he was living in a quote, chemical torture room house that was coated in stainless steel and has since gotten out of it to help himself live a better life. After this point in time in his post history, we're also able to notice that the strange repetitive posting incidents where he's going on multiple accounts, repeating the same phrases over and over, and essentially talking to himself, seem to cease almost entirely. With all of this in mind, it's safe to assume that the actual culprit behind all of the strange post history and the Yay Video Games incident itself were all triggered by his attempts at coping with his chronic fatigue syndrome with various different narcotics and pharmaceuticals. It's likely that these all caused him to fall into a mental state where he simply wasn't all there, and as a result, the internet promptly took notice and was immensely creeped out by it. Since then, this guy has sort of fallen off the face of Reddit. Yay Video Games was terminated, not sure how big you are's last post was about 4 years ago, No Substance Here stopped about 5 or so years ago, and Vinyl Records stopped around 2012. In a way, the internet has served as somewhat of a diary for this guy, and it's borderline depressing reading through his post history and backstory. What we all perceived as creepy, ominous, and puzzling, was simply a guy trying to cope with his life full of hell that all started from back when he was a kid. Not sure how big you are, or no substance here, or vinyl record, or yay video games, or whatever you'd like to call him, was never a bot. He was never a shit poster. He was never a disturbed lunatic. He was simply a guy with an immensely deep backstory that was doing his best to cope with the unfortunate circumstances plaguing his health. And that's it. Before we wrap things up, I want to make it clear that this was all a theory on what this guy went through. I wasn't able to dig through the pages and pages of the 8 years of his post history, so there was quite a lot that was either generalized or glossed over. 
As always, I highly recommend that you go over to the links in the description and do some reading of your own. Also, I'd like to go forth and state that this video was supplemented immensely by one of my viewers, SoLegitHS, who has a Twitter and a Reddit account with these handles, so if you'd like to get in contact or follow him for any further developments, definitely head over and do so. Anyway guys, with that being said, this is where I'll wrap up the tale of Yay Video Games. I'm so glad that we're finally able to get some answers on this, and I hope that we can confidently close the book on this supposed internet mystery for good. Thank you all for watching. I'll see you in the next one. I love you all, and good night.